Say you've gone ahead and created this awesome looking material here in Substance Designer, but now you want to go ahead and maybe bring it out into a different application so that you can go ahead and maybe do some portfolio renders. Well, in this video, I want to actually show you the PBR render nodes available to us within Substance Designer so that we don't even have to leave the application to go ahead and get some awesome looking material renders. Now we'll notice that I'm in an entirely empty graph here minus our material because we're not going to really need any other nodes other than the material itself and the PBR render node. So I'm going to go ahead and start to type in PBR render into our search bar and we're going to get a couple different options. Now these two I'm actually going to save for a little bit later in the video. So let's just go ahead with the PBR render node itself. And we can see that it's going to take us actually into our 2D view here. And it's important to note that this node in particular does not actually affect anything in our 3D view. So from here on out, we can kind of say goodbye to the 3D view because now we're just going to be focusing on a 2D final render. And with the node selected, we can also notice that it looks very familiar to what a traditional material ball render looks like. And it's also going to look very similar actually to the thumbnails in our materials library. And a little bit of, uh, you know, fun trivia for you. We actually use this PBR render node to get all the thumbnails for each one of these library materials. So that's just going to show you kind of the power that we can harness by using this node. So let's actually take a look at how we can use it. So I'm going to zoom in here into our nodes and we'll notice that on the PBR render node, some of the input sockets are actually just going to take the individual channels from our material here. So I'm going to make sure that we are in material connection mode. And let's just bring those in. And as soon as I plug them in, we can see very easily it's going to go ahead and just pretty much map our individual channels to the sphere object for our render. And the first thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and make sure that we kind of change our environment because that's going to contribute a lot of the lighting information and is a pretty integral part of material renders. So how we can go about changing that is if I come down to the bottom of the PBR render node, we'll notice that there's this environment map socket and this is going to allow me to bring in an HDRI. If we come to the HDRI environments, I can just take one here and drag and drop in and go ahead and link it. And then it's going to be a part of my resources folder within my package itself. So we can just drag one in and let's go ahead and plug this into our environment map. So that now when I view our PBR render node, it's going to update and actually start lighting our material across the surface of this mesh. We can see that we're gonna have a couple different shapes, right? Right now we're previewing on the sphere, we can also use a plane and a cylinder if we want to go ahead and maybe change up the composition of this shot. Now I'm going to stick with sphere first, but we will be taking a look at a plane object a little bit later in the video. We can also play around with the displacement of our height map here. So you can see as I bring this up, it's really going to you know, stretch everything in and push everything out, uh, which doesn't look ideal for this particular material. And what I'm going to do is about 0.05 intensity. So it's going to be very, very slight intensity, right? But we are going to get a little bit of displacement for these bricks. As we've seen, we can also go ahead and actually rotate our environment, which is going to alter both the background and the lighting that this material is going to receive. And I think I'm going to want to do about 300 degrees on the rotation here so that it's going to give me a nice, you know, kind of well lit area as well as providing a little bit more shadowed information as well on the right side of this sphere. And finally we're also able to actually change the background mode or the information that's going to be in the background of this render. So you can see right now we have environment so it's going to show whatever is plugged into our environment slot and I can make it just a very crisp render or I can actually really bring up the blur on this as well. And so it's going to be whatever you're going to want to kind of fit your final render. So I'm going to go ahead and stick with the ambient background and I'm going to continue on down to our shape header and we're going to have a ton of different options and this is all going to relate to the actual shape or the geometry or the mesh that we have our material mapped onto. So we can play around with the scale, right? Make it smaller or make it larger. 
and I'm going to stick with just a scale of one. We can also play around with the rotation and actually alter the rotation direction, right, to give it a little bit more uh, visual intrigue if we wanted to go ahead and actually rotate it in a kind of cool way. However, I'm going to leave that all at zero for now. And we're also going to get a couple more options for rotation and positioning this mesh within our composition here. Now, I'm going to leave that for now. We're going to touch on that in a little bit. But the slider I do want to focus on is actually going to be this UV tiling. And we can see that it goes from one all the way up to six. And that's going to give us, right, some UV tiling so that we can actually get more or less of this material across our mesh. However, these limits are actually going to be soft caps. So I can go less than one or greater than six if I really wanted to. And for this particular material, I want to actually go a little bit less than one. So I'm going to select our value of one here and type in 0 0.7. And we can see that that's actually going to decrease the scale of our texture across this asset. It's going to give me something a little bit more like what I want to render out. And now I want to continue on with some of the parameters down here, but I want to take a look at our camera. And this is going to be all of the parameters available to us to manipulate our camera. Now, if you select this node, you might notice that we actually have this little dot in the center of our render. And if you go ahead and actually move this around, right, it looks like it's going to rotate the asset itself, but it's actually rotating the camera, as we can see here with these screen position sliders under the camera header. So this is a way that we can go ahead and actually manipulate our mesh and our material to go ahead and further compose our shot. Now I'm going to leave these back at zero and zero because I actually like how the light is hitting our material this way. However, what I do want to do is I want to change the distance of the camera to the mesh. And this one might be a little bit confusing, but the less distance there is, right, the closer we're going to be. And therefore, inversely, the more distance there is, the farther away we're going to be. So I'm going to go ahead and change this all the way up to four because I want to change our field of view down to around 15. And so what the field of view is going to do is just try and flatten everything out a little bit here. And for a nice looking material render, generally a lower field of view tends to work a lot better because you're going to see a lot more of the information at a bit of a flatter value here. So it generally looks a little bit better than a field of view that's a lot larger. I'm also going to go ahead and bring our exposure up to 0.5. I want to bring our vignette intensity as well, all the way up to one. And I can bring our vignette radius down and we'll see that it's actually going to bring in those corners a little bit, but it's going to get to a point where it's not subtle at all, right? It's very, very apparent that we're vignetting. So we want to make sure that it's going to be kind of a subtle effect. So I'm going to do 0 0.8 and I think that's going to be a pretty good result. And finally, the last kind of camera effect that I want to do for our render here is going to be adding some depth of field. So we can do that within these aperture settings down here. So I'm going to go with our aperture radius and give it an aperture of 0 0.02. And hopefully you can notice in the video that we've actually given it a little bit of a depth of field fall off, right? So if I go ahead and uh, actually I'll take a look over here. I think it's a little bit easier. Bring this back down, right? We can see very crisp. And now we've got a little bit of fall off. And finally, I'm going to scroll down to our render settings. So under this header, we're going to find a lot of extra post effects, as well as just the general render quality of our final shot here. So the first option we're going to want to take a look at is this diffuse quality. So if I zoom in real close here so that we can get a better look, and I go ahead and change this from 32 samples up to 128 samples, it's actually going to improve the quality of the render just a little bit more. Now I'm going to leave most of these sliders here because this is just affecting the overall diffuse and the overall specularity, which I think is pretty good by default. But I do want to go ahead and add a little bit of extra ambient occlusion into this final render. And it's going to be the ambient occlusion from our material node. So let's go and bring this up to 0.5. And we can see it's going to add a little bit of shadows into the cracks of this material and add a little bit more overall contrast to our render. Now that's really going to be the PBR render node in a nutshell.
and you can see it's very easy to set up, very easy to work with, and it's also going to allow us to continue to stay within the same workflow as Substance Designer. Now the fun doesn't really stop there. We can go ahead and also get individual renders of each one of the channels from our initial material here. And it's going to be mapped exactly like how we have it here so that it's going to line up scale wise, composition wise, and all that. So what I can do is start to type in PBR render again. And we're going to remember from the beginning of this tutorial that we had these PBR render mapping nodes. And we've got one for color and one for grayscale. Let's go and select color here. And we'll see that we're going to have a texture input and a UVs input. And so the texture one's going to be easy, right? I can just go ahead and select any one of these color channels. Let's say the normals. Oh, but I want to make sure that I'm in standard selection there. But nothing's going to show up. And that's going to be because we're going to actually need to draw the UVs from our PBR render node. So if I double click this, we can see that we're going to get this kind of PBR view for the UVs. And we're also actually going to get a couple of different renders for this guy here. So it's also very useful to get a couple of different surfacing shots in case you wanted to add these to your final composition. Let's go ahead and bring the UVs into this PBR mapping node. And we can see now I've gone ahead and mapped our normal map into the same exact position as our final beauty shot. And again, I can do this for our color. So if we go ahead and bring in our color, I can also go ahead and add a PBR for our grayscale. So again, making sure we plug in our UVs and I'll go ahead and select our ambient occlusion. So this is a very quick way that you can go and get individual renders for all of your different material channels so that you can go ahead and composite those into maybe like a material breakdown. So that's been a rundown of how we can use the PBR render nodes to go ahead and facilitate a material ball render. But what if you don't want to do just a material ball render, right? Like how we saw earlier, we can actually use a plane or a cylinder as our shape. So let's go ahead and add another PBR render node. And let's bring this in. So we can see very quickly, right? It's gone ahead and made this pretty cool sci-fi material ball. But again, I don't want to use the material ball. So let's go ahead and change the shape from sphere to plane. As well, I don't want to just render out in this very square aspect ratio. So what you can do is come down to the PBR render node and we can actually change the output size if we come up to absolute here and we can actually give it a more 16 by 9 horizontal aspect ratio. So let's say I want the width to be 2048 and I want the height to be 1024 so that we're going to get a little bit of a longer shot here. Let's go ahead and bring in our HDRI here, and I'm going to bring in this cave entry one that's built into Substance Designer. And I'm going to quickly just go ahead, make sure that this is set to ambient. I'm going to want to bring our intensity down to 0 0.05. And let's make sure that our normal format is again in the correct format here. The first thing I'm going to want to set is going to be our camera here. And then we can go ahead and actually play around with moving our 3D asset. So I want to bring the distance in a little bit. So let's bring this to one so that we can get a nice, you know, tighter and in close shot. I'm also going to want to bring our camera up just a little bit. And I'm thinking on the X, maybe around 0 0.6. And on the Y, let's do about 0 0.4 so that we're going to get kind of this grazing shot here. So now that I've gone ahead and actually positioned my camera, let's go back up into our shape here because I want to bring the scale up to two, right? To make this a little bit larger. I'm going to bring the shape position over on the X a little bit as well. So let's go ahead and set this over to the X, maybe 0 0.5. And let's also go ahead and set the UV tiling up to two as well, so that it's going to kind of tile a little bit 
And we're gonna get this kind of repeating shot here to really highlight and showcase the different aspects of our material. So you can see very easily and very quickly, this is starting to look very cool. So I'm gonna come all the way down now to our render settings as well. Again, making sure we're bumping up the overall diffuse render quality. I'm gonna bring our bloom intensity up to 0.5. And I'm also going to bring the threshold down to 0.5 as well. So that we're gonna get a little bit of a uh, kind of glossy shot here. And now the overall compositing doesn't actually have to stop there. Because this is all just within the node structure, we can actually continue to iterate on this image again, using very familiar nodes that we've been accustomed to. So I'm gonna create off of our beauty shot here, just another simple blend node. I'll drag out another node here and use a high pass color node, which is gonna just give me a high pass of the color information. I'm gonna run this through a sharpen node as well to try and sharpen up some of that information. And I'm gonna give it an intensity of 0.1. And let's go ahead and plug this back in. Changing our blending mode to be overlay and the intensity or the opacity to be 0.5. So we can see very quickly, right? I've gone ahead from just this kind of, you know, cool looking composition shot here to a more robust and edited high quality render. And now again, we don't even need to stop here. We could continue to keep going with this node structure, but again, for the sake of brevity and because it's a tutorial, I think I'm gonna close it here. And now I wanna go ahead and show you one last tidbit of really cool functionality that's really going to speed up our workflow with rendering in Substance Designer. And that's going to be the idea of presets. So I've gone ahead and selected this node here, our PBR render node, and we can come up to the top where it says instance parameters. And we'll notice that we actually have this drop down here to go ahead and give some default parameters. And it's going to change everything that we've been changing throughout the duration of this video. So you can see that I can change this to a plain close up. I can go ahead and maybe set this up to like a sphere default position, which is you know, kind of similar to what we had, but a little bit different. However, the fun doesn't really stop there because we can actually go ahead and establish our own presets to be used across any PBR render node that we want to use. So with our, you know, parameters all set up like how we want it, I'm going to go up to instance parameters and click on this little preset file option. And you can see we can load or save preset files. So I'm going to select save. And let's call this PBR sphere render. And I'll go ahead and save this and we'll notice that it is a substance preset file, right? A .sbs prs. So that now if I come down to our sci-fi wall here and go ahead and load a preset file, again, our PBR sphere render, it's gonna go ahead and update it exactly like how we've set up our other file. So this is a very flexible and very efficient way of quickly just dragging and dropping your materials into different graphs, going ahead and plugging them into preset up and predefined PBR render nodes and quickly getting efficient and flexible material renders.